These awards let us reflect upon the ways that historic preservation has improved our city. And each year, the State Historic Preservation Officer selects one award that best embodies the spirit and energy we draw from our heritage. This year, that award goes to the restoration and modernization of the Carnegie Library at Mount Vernon Square. This gem of a building is one of Washington's best known landmarks. Yet its glistening restoration by Bayer, Blinder, Bell, and Apple came about only after a string of attempts that didn't quite work. So what makes this project stand out? First is the building and the place itself, a civic landmark cited on place of honor. It reminds us of the unique urban environment, the mutual dependency of landmarks and vistas that makes Washington famous. It teaches us a story of equity inscribed in the arc of its forecourt, a university for the people. In an era of robber barons and Jim Crow, it stood as a place of education and betterment open to all. It marks a division in our city, the line between downtown and the neighborhoods. But rather than keeping them separate, it draws them together, mingling residents and visitors to feed a vibrant public life. But for all its distinction, this was a remarkably difficult building to renovate. Both grand and small, its layout suited a library for our grandparents, but confounded attempts to modernize. Its elegant finishes, weathered and neglected, needed expensive repair. Popping up and digging under, opening a back door, shoehorning in an auditorium, nothing tried before really seemed to work. Until finally it did work, through architectural ingenuity and corporate commitment and the wise counsel of public commissions. Working together, the goals of the preservation law were met. Restore what is essential, be sensitive and creative in making the changes essential to modern needs. This project should inspire us and raise the bar of expectations for the entire neighborhood around Mount Vernon Square. At the end of our first meeting on the Spy Museum proposal, Alan Liu and I began to brainstorm about Tech World and the need to transform it into a place more respectful of our urban heritage and more supportive of an active street life. That may take some time, but persistence in preservation pays off. And as the Carnegie Project shows, the third time can be a charm. Occupying a place of prominence in DC's Mount Vernon Square, the Carnegie Library opened its doors in 1903 as the first desegregated library in the District of Columbia. Originally a donation from industrialist Andrew Carnegie, the library came to symbolize the free accessibility of knowledge for the public. It's a beautiful jewel. It's like a gem in the middle of this green oasis and surrounded uh, interestingly enough, by all glass buildings. So that contrast between the masonry, beautiful gem of a building and the scale of it, and the big, tall glass buildings around it, even emphasizes its importance and, and maybe it makes it more precious. The building operated as DC's Central Public Library for almost 70 years until the city outgrew the space. For the next 40 years, Washington struggled to find a permanent use for the building. But then in 2016, it was announced that Apple wished to make the location its flagship store for the nation's capital. A conversation that our real estate team had with Angela Ahrens when they were touring the market, she said, we need a location that is worthy of our nation's capital. We need a location that is worthy of the town square, the idea of the town square, the idea of today at Apple, and that personified basically how today at Apple would be uh, shared in DC. To create a space for the retailer, the building underwent a renovation and revitalization. The project would restore the original footprint of the Bow Art style building while incorporating contemporary features into the historic fabric. It's always a balance between 
what is the fabric, i.e. the stone and wood and paint that was original, and what is the current needs uh, that f are going to fit within it, because a building that's not a living building, doesn't have constantly changing uses, is, is a ruin. The goal of the treatment was to find a balance between those criteria. I think we weighed heavily on, and appropriately so, on the preservation part. The building's exterior had to be completely restored. The Vermont marble was cleaned, and elements that had deteriorated over the years were removed and replaced. The copper roof was also restored, and the entry plaza was re-sloped to provide full accessibility. Additionally, new skylights were installed to help return natural daylight to the interior central atrium. Up on the roof, you know, we installed a, a skylight, so it's one of the largest pieces of glass in North America. Um, I think it's the second largest piece of glass in the world. Uh, it was just one element of a seven bay glass skylight up there at the skylight of the building. We wanted to maintain that aspect of the building, which is having natural light in the heart of the, well, of the building. Two glass bridges on each side of the atrium floor were added, giving visitors access to the DC Hall of History and raised views into the atrium. On the lower level was a vaulted ceiling made of Gustavino tile that had been completely covered by paint and fixtures. We walked into the building and I just couldn't believe my eyes. Those incredible, beautiful, three vaulted ceilings in that room were whitewashed painted throughout. There were a lot of exposed conduits for fluorescent lights and pendants and such that, um, that damage all the surfaces. The tile ceiling was restored, and the space now contains a visual history of the library. The other stakeholders in the project, all of our contractors are subcontractors and tradesmen that pass through the doors of that building, uh, has made it the most special project that I've been a part of in, in my 25 years of career here in Washington State. With the Apple Store open and the Historical Society of Washington, D.C. back in a newly restored space, the Carnegie Library now enters into a new chapter of existence, not far from its original founding ideals. The, the, the grandeur of the building was intended to express the virtues of knowledge, of free exchange of information, of openness and, and humanity. A building like this, built, designed and built specifically to house ideals, is exactly the best use of, of the goals of historic preservation. So I think it's a very appropriate reimagining of the building.